Okay. Um, how's everybody doing? I hope I don't annoy you again today because I've got some numbers and stuff to talk about. Uh, this seems to be the, the way it's going for me. I had several ideas through the week. And then you sit down to, to try and put them into something and you get something else comes into your head and you can't get out of it and so that's where I go wherever I'm led so um, we're going to talk about jubilees um, in Leviticus 25 you can turn there we'll read a few several verses there Leviticus 25, verse 1, and it says, And the Lord spake unto Moses in Mount Sinai, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye have come into the land which I give you, then shall ye sell the land, keep a Sabbath unto the Lord. Six years thou shalt sow thy field, and six years thou shalt prune thy vineyards, and gather in the fruit thereof. But in the seventh year shall be a Sabbath of rest unto the land, a Sabbath for the Lord. Thou shalt neither sow thy field, nor prune thy vineyards. Then shalt thou cause the trumpet of the jubilee to sound on the tenth day of the seventh month in the, uh, in the day of, of atonement. Shall ye make the trumpet sound through all your land, and ye shall hallow the fifth tenth year, and proclaim liberty throughout all the land unto all the inhabitants thereof. It shall be a jubilee unto you, and ye shall return every man unto his possession, and ye shall return every man unto his family. A jubilee shall, be, shall that fiftieth year be unto you. Ye shall not sow, neither reap, that which groweth of itself in it, nor gather the grapes in it of the vine undressed. For it is, is the jubilee. It shall be holy unto you. Ye shall eat the increase thereof out of the field, in the year of this jubilee, it shall return every man unto his possession. Okay, so uh, I'll be moving back and forth here on the board some to write these things up so that you can kind of keep them because it can get a little goofy. Because a lot of people, when they talk about jubilees, they talk about the seven-year jubilee, and then they talk about the 50-year jubilee. And it's not that way. The seventh year is a sabbatical uh, year. And... Um, So just to make a note up here so y'all can keep up with it. The seventh year is a sabbatical year. Okay? So six, six years you plow, you grow seeds, you grow the, uh, the harvest and, and everything. And then in the seventh year, the land lays idle. Nothing happens. It's a sabbatical year um, for the land. So they don't grow anything that year. They are supposed to have supplies and stores set up so that they don't eat um, anything out of the fields that grows of its own. And you all know what I'm talking about there. You've all seen that. They don't plow a field, but whatever was in it last year usually starts coming up anyway. So they didn't do that until they could glean from that on the first year starting in the next year um, because in that year they, they could they go ahead and glean what they have there and then they'd have to replant the crops so they would that sabbatical year actually still provided for them some and then after after seven um, of the sabbatical years, seven times seven, 49, okay, 49 years, on the 50th year, this is the jubilee. In the Bible, they only spell it with one E, but it's supposed to be spelled with two, evidently, because we're smarter. Uh, so the 50th year is the Jubilee year. 
and that would happen after seven years of seven, seven times of seven years. Uh, which kind of, hopefully your mind is a little thinking a little here a little bit about after seven Sabbath, the day after the seventh Sabbath is the day of Pentecost, first fruits. Okay? So, do you have a question? I didn't think you did. I'm messing with you. Okay. So, these, these are how this, this was set up. They were supposed to do this. Israel pretty much never really did any of this. They never really followed these rules. They were too busy breaking God's rules to do his rules. But just as Noah was in the, the fish's belly three days and three nights, so shall the Son of Man be in the earth three days and three nights. Okay? So things that are happening back here, things that are said and timelines laid out, pertain to the future. And they show us things that are happening or going to happen. Okay? So remember these numbers here. That's why I wrote them down, because I couldn't. And let me explain this, too. When this year came, that was the end of the seventh, seventh, seven years. That was the land was laid idle too this year because it's a year of its own. The fiftieth year, it laid idle again. And then the fifty-first year, they could take from what grew those years, and out of the fields and eat that. And it was a mighty. It would be. The Bible tells us that it would have been. A mighty crop would have grown anyway. And they could have that. And in the 51st year, they'd go back to sowing their fields. And at the end of the year, they'd reap their, their stuff from the 51st year uh, of the thing. So they didn't skip this and go, well, the 50th year is going to be our, our sabbatical and our jubilee. It was a sabbatical year and a jubilee year every 50 years. So, um, The Jubilee was announced the fall before the year began at atonement. That's what he, he read up there uh, in the Leviticus there a minute ago. It would be heralded in on uh, the Day of Atonement, blowing of the shofar, and uh, we just read all that up there. Um, the Jubilee is a Sabbath year. Um, but it's a bigger deal because it's only done once every 50 years. And uh, Israel was to live mainly off the crops produced in the 48th year. Crops which would last for the 49th and 50th year all the way through the harvest of the 51st. The Jubilee is a year of liberty. All prisoners and slaves were released. And you got to remember, it says slaves, but in Israel, slavery was more of a, um, not all the time, but Predominantly, it was more of a indentured servant type of thing. Actually, an, an agreement. I'll work for you for X number of years, and then you'll give me this, and I'll go about my business. Or if I'm happy, I'll stay with you. You know. Uh, the jubilee jubilee year is also a financial redemption when all mor mortgages and debts were also canceled on that time. So I guess a couple years before the jubilee came, you went out and mortgaged a few things. <laughs> And the Jubilee is the acceptable year of the Lord when all forms of isolation would end, happy communion with one's family, and the Lord will be restored. Keep that in mind. And like I said earlier, Israel did not do these. Um, you may remember back, some of you, I don't know, in 1998, the nation had a Jubilee year, but they called it a civil Jubilee not a sabbatical jubilee. That was just to celebrate Israel had been a nation for 50 years, from 48 to 98. So they talked about it being a jubilee, but they recognized that it was not God's appointed jubilee. <clears throat> um, let me...
I was going to change my order, but I'm not. All right. Here's your, you're going to have to listen to some, some stuff and kind of put this together in your head. In Luke 3, in verse 1, it says, Now in the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, Pontius Pilate being the governor of Judah, and Herod, tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip, tetrarch of Ituria, and the region of Traconis, Traconinitis, and Lysanias, the tetrarch of Abilene, and Ananias and Caiaphas being the high priest. The word of God came into the son and came into John, the son of Zacharias, in the wilderness, and he came unto all the country about Jordan, preaching the baptism of repentance and for the remission of sins. Now, everything that's in the Bible is there for a reason. Okay, uh, it's it's all there for you to learn something, for you to learn how to act, how to behave, what to eat, um, how to treat others, how to treat your God. And, and, and all the like. Why did Luke have to mention this lineage thing almost of the 15th year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar? Pontius Pilate being the governor of Judea. And Herod. And then his brother Philip. And then Lysanias. Um, and where they were uh, ruling at. And what they ruled. That has nothing to do. But it does. That helps people put together what time this was in A.D. And it is assumed and thought predominantly to be the 15th year of Tiberius' reign is considered to be between A.D. 26 and A.D. 30. So, now there's, there's always that guessing game that they're doing because you know, people aren't right all the time and, and perfect. But it's in this area. It's much like what I showed you last week at the Bible study with Hosea. You know, he was going to, when the shepherd was killed, the flock would be scattered and trampled over for two days. But on the second day, he will bring them back. And on the third day, they would live in his presence. We know now when Jesus is coming back. We're coming back on the third day. We just don't know what year of that third day. So we're still in the dark. But everything has its purpose here. And that's what I believe this is done here for. It's done to show you that it's right in this time when all of these people were in their place ruling. Then you can set the time better. Because um, if he just said, you know, Larry was running his shop then and talking about normal Jews and where they were living and doing at that time, there's no record of that. But there's historical records of these leaders, so-called leaders, running the show. Um, so it's believed that in this time, this period of 26 to 30 A.D., that that was, would have been a jubilee year. Okay? So they take, for, for, for the sake of this, we're going to say, uh, it says 26 to 30, so we're going to cut it in the middle, and we're going to make it A.D. 28. Okay, we'll just be there in the middle. Just, I mean, I could pick either one, or I could pick 27 or 29 if I wanted, but um, that's when they think it is. So, 50 years later would be A.D. 78, Okay. Every century had two um, jubilees, the 28th and the 78th, okay? Um, the next one here after this would be 128 and then 178 and so on and so on. And this is approximate still, okay? This is not, but I'm, I'm pulling numbers and things from people who were, much more studied than I am, and using the, the uh, like a consensus of what all their thoughts are. That's why you come up with this uh, 20, 26 A.D. to 30 A.D. But it would still run that way. Even if it was 25 A.D. And, and, or, or something like that, it would have been A.D. 25 and then 75. It would, uh, wouldn't change anything. You're still going to have two every year or every 100 years. So... 
<clears throat> it is thought that right after Luke and Luke 3 1 there made this statement about John came out of the wilderness and started preaching repentance for the remission of sins. Um, Jesus was baptized eventually there and went into the wilderness 40 days. And he was tempted and he did not eat. <clears throat> and um, then he returned. Okay? So. Everything has a place. Everything is an example for us to know and learn. So 40 of the sabbatical um, years uh, would be, go ahead and say it just to get it out, 2028 would be the sabbatical year this year if you ran that through on 40 of those. But listen to this because Jesus spoke. A, ju a jubilee sermon, as they're called, are supposed to, because this is, this is given in uh, Isaiah chapter 26, or chapter 61. How do I get 26 from 61? Uh, preach the gospel to the poor, heal the brokenhearted, Set free the spiritual captives of Satan. Recover the sight of the spiritually blind. Set at liberty those who are bruised. And proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This sermon was preached in the 15th year of Emperor Tiberius. When you turn over to um, Luke 4, verse 17 through 21. Jesus, this is after he has gotten out of... Uh, out of his 40 days, and he has rested and eaten. He comes to Nazareth. I'm going to start in 16. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, and he stood up for to read. And he was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has set me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering the sight of the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And he closed the book and gave it to the, again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all them that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, this day is this scripture fulfilled in your ears. So Jesus is gone for 40 years, possibly representing 40 sabbatical cycles. And then on the 50th day, he returns. Just saying. Just saying. It all means something to us. And when you couple that with what we, I talked about last week about Hosea, and then you couple that with what I talked about months back, about the fact that um, that in Psalms and in Isaiah, it talks about the reestablishing of Israel. In Hosea, it talked about the reestablishing of Israel. And we drew that, out, that timeline out on the board and everything like that. And I keep coming back to these numbers right in this area. You know, right around this 20, 30 years kind of thing. The beginning of the third day. The day in which his people will live in his presence. Okay? A lot of people did not know these things way back. This is not really hard to do science or put this together. It just takes time. And a little thinking and you put it together. The thing in Hosea just takes a little time and thinking to put it together. What does he mean? He's going to scatter them and then... In two days, he's going to bring them back? Well, you have to think, what does he mean about two days? What, what is two days? And then on the third day, they're going to live in his presence? You have to start thinking. Now, when the Bible first started getting printed, it was a New Testament-only Bible, and they left revelations out in many of them. And when, I can't remember his name, but when he got a hold of it, uh, one of the Catholic churches in the beginning there, 
they made a decree because they started to write the Bible in other languages, Greek, um, German, and such. Didn't have English then, so they didn't do it there. And they made a decree that the Bible could only be written in one language, and that was the language that nobody understands, Latin. And they killed people for writing the Bible in another language. For many years they did that. There was fighting and feuding and all that kind of stuff. Has anybody ever heard of a Tinsdale um, Bible? It's basically 90 to 95% of it is the King James Version. He was burnt at a, cross, uh, at a stake for writing that Bible and for producing it, printing it. But the funny thing about it was before they got him and they did that to him, people loved the fact that he was writing the Bible in Greek and German. And then it goes on through time like that. They did it in France. Um, they did it in England. Uh, Wycliffe, Wycliffe Bible. He started a Bible college off the coast of Scotland and eventually was burned too for writing the Bible in other languages other than Latin. If people don't know what it says, then they are ignorant to it and you can tell them what it says. You know, we take reading for granted now. But back in the day, it was like a miracle, a blessing from God if you could read. And for many, many hundreds of years, people never knew this was in the Bible. They weren't allowed to read it. They were read to. And the man would say whatever he wanted. It's typical stuff. Man greedy. So, again, this is, I, I know I might be stretching this for you, but I got the closing arguments on this. <laughs> I'll be coming up in a minute. Um, okay, so, again, like I was saying, 49 years, and on the 50th year is Pentecost, which, first fruits, I consider Pentecost resurrection time. I know a lot of people think trumpets is resurrection time. Resurrection time. I don't. I think first fruits is. So, the harvest. And God talks about his people are sheep in, the, in Almighty's flock. He talks about his people are plants in his garden. Spiritual jubilee crop. Self-producing, holy, miraculously abundant. That's what this years of laying dormant was about when they did not sow the fields, but they still grew and produced, or they would have if they'd have done it. But they didn't do it. And again, people in the early days did not have Bibles that they could really read. And by then they were already saturated with lies and misgivings about Scripture that when they probably did get one that they could read, they didn't really look at it and try and figure it out yet. They just followed the lead of the other guy. Followed the lead of the guy they saw get rich off Christianity. So... <clears throat> makes sense to me that after the 49th year of sab sabbat sab sabbatical years I get it that 50th year is first fruits time we those that are God's people are his crop, his jubilee crop. Now, I'm not telling you that 2028 we're being resurrected. No, I'm not telling you that. Again, I think this helps point to the other one in Hosea, or Hosea helps point this one out, that the, the last day is coming. The third day is soon to start. And we know that it's going to get cut off short. 
because we need it cut off short to save our lives. That's how bad it's supposed to be. And I'll start wrapping this up somewhat. You, you might be going, Chris, what's up with all the end time stuff? Why are you stuck on this? Like I said earlier, I couldn't get away from this. I had other things on my mind. God put other things in my mind. So I have to write what I get, I'm given. I have to figure out what I'm figuring, what he's given me to figure. And no, I did not do all this work myself. I referenced other people and uh, their works and their writings and their numbers and stuff like that. But when you put it all together and you look at it and you go, whoa, that's pretty crazy. Pretty crazy. But all these numbers, all these numbers being able to work out and being able to see and being able to compare to things like Pentecost and counting to Pentecost and such, coming up in these same number areas. Drives home the fact, I think, that these numbers in the Bible, these things that are said in the Bible and Scripture, are not just something he said. It's just like with Luke. Why would Luke give us all that mess about 15th year of Tiberius? And then talking about, uh, I don't know, that other guy. Uh, the patriarchs of Israel, which are just the put up by Rome uh, kings or lords or whatever over the people to try and make them feel like they're being guided and led by their own type of people and not by Rome. But it shows us that they are really there for a reason. It shows us that the Bible is not wrong. The Bible is real. It, it, it's 1 Corinthians 10, 11, it says, Now all these things happened unto them for examples, and they are written for, the, for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. We're in that time. And I know y'all know that. I know y'all talk about it. But I don't know how much you really know it and believe it. It makes me feel good knowing what is going on. I mean, you know, I've been going through all kinds of trouble with my hip and my back and everything. It would make me, and now it has a little bit, make me feel so much better when I knew, oh, I have a busted disc. Oh, I've got this terrible bursitis because of this steel rod running through my hip. Oh, and it can be that painful to make you not be able to walk. Oh, I get it now. All right. I got it. It makes you feel better when you know what's wrong with you, not when the doctor goes, we're still not sure what's going on with you. We'll get to it, though. We'll get to it. Then you walk out of there going, I don't know. You walk out of there in fear. But these times are coming because these numbers are coming around this way. And I think nothing better than the, the verse in uh, Hosea 6, 1 and 2. Nothing better there that tells you the third day is when he's coming back. We just don't know the year. And we'll, we're not going to get it right so i'm not going to guess the years or anything like that they just these numbers keep leading me to that time area not that he's coming back because that's the beginning of the third day and the day third day goes on a little bit more you don't know when he's cutting it off short but he says for the sake of the elect i will cut it short so with this knowledge, with this, these thoughts of these dates and what's going on, what we already see going on in our world, too. But now remember, everybody, everybody through all time thought that, um, that the end times were upon them. The Geneva Bible was the main Bible for a long time, uh, mainly written in, um, in Latin. Uh, I forget who did that one. But anyway, it was later passed off to the Tinsdale and then to the King James. The Geneva Bible with the actual real footnotes, you'll find in there in Revelations where it's talking about uh, the beast. The footnotes written there by um, 
Oh, I can't remember his name. I thought it would pop out, but it's not. The footnotes are, um, talk about Boniface, the Pope, and how the beast was him, and how he had already done a lot of these things to people. And he shows you history around his time that kind of points to stuff that's in Revelations and stuff. And so you go, oh, okay, so I get why they would think that. And he flat out, he, of course, got burnt, but because he was calling the Pope a liar. And he flat out said, the Pope is not the Word of God. The Scripture is the Word of God. Amen. That's what it is. That's what we have, this book. And that's why I find it so important to dig through it. Don't give yourself a headache, but dig through it some. Remember, don't look too close because you'll mess it up. Just dig through it and find what, what is what. And it gives you hope. Because the more you see actually happen in prophecy, happen before us, or prophecy says, and you see something working out numbers or days or something like that, the more you see that. I mean, I used to think, why in the world are we reading about a jubilee that they never kept? That's the way I looked at it. I said, why read about a jubilee that they never kept? What's it mean? I don't know. Walk off. Here's the problem. I'm going that way. But, no, it came back. I had to start looking at it again. And instead of saying, nope, I'm not going to worry about it, I said, there's got to be something here then. And then there is. It works out. I mean, somebody could argue and say, well, why wouldn't it be 40, 50 years? No, because that's going to put us probably in, in the fourth day. But anyway, with the knowledge of the Bible and seeing the prophecies and seeing what they say and how they went, when you go... Two, two verses in Hosea, one and two. And they cover 2,000 years with just a few lines, a couple lines, talking about the, the flock will be scattered and then they will be, uh, basically it's saying, I'm going to paraphrase, I can't remember the wording. It says that they will be, uh, they will be hurt. They will be scattered. They will be, killed it basically is talking about just jews went all over the world anybody looking like a jew acting like a jew was uh was uh hurt looked down upon so you find these things out and it should give you that okay you know because somebody is worried about something happening to their child. And when I heard this, I said, oh my God, does anybody believe in him? And this is God-fearing parents. And they're worried. He says have faith, have it. Have it. He's not joking. These words don't mean nothing. They mean your life. It is God's Word. It is awesome. And man, I am pumped up about this stuff, and I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. And I'm not talking about go fight. I'm ready to go. I, I want Him to give me something to do. I'm ready to do it. And y'all, you got problems? Pray, and then believe, and don't worry about them no more. Let it go. Put it in God's hands. When you actually do it, it'll get better. It's God. He's your father. He doesn't lie. My dad lied. My father does not lie. At all. I'm just going to end it up with that. And, you know, take a look at stuff. And I hope. Hope you aren't sitting there thinking I'm a nut in the back of your head, but if you do, okay, I don't mind. Uh, but just take out your books and start looking at stuff that maybe you thought didn't mean much, and then look around some more with it, Google it some, and you might find some really interesting stuff. All right? I'm going to be done now.